Hello, YouTubers. This is a new session where we get to talk to engineers from all over the world who are passionate about the technologies that they work with. Today, I am uh, joined by my dear friend, Lupe. Hi, Lupe. How are you doing? Hi, Hassan. How are you doing? I'm doing uh, great. Uh, Lupe is, is a software engineer at Microsoft. Uh, she is working on Windows operating system, but you know she also has such a great passion for web technologies. And uh, we've been talking a little bit and we did a previous session to rehearse and kind of get things going. And then we're going back to making a new one. You know, she's going to teach us today about a framework or a technology called Playwright. Did I say that right? Lope, is it Playwright? Yes, that's right. Okay. That's you say it. So first of all, tell us a little bit about you and tell us, tell us a little bit about Playwright and show us how it works. Go ahead. Okay, um, so I'm from Bolivia, already said. Um, I got involved in community since college, um, and I think that's that was that built my way into Microsoft, and mostly I, I that also built my roots onto like the best way of learning is sharing and teaching. Um, so I am actually creating a video course on on, on Playwright that's going to be in Spanish, um, and it's going to start well. I will be recording that the next week. Um, and that's for me and about Playwright. Well, that's a, that's um, a tool that we you we can use for end-to-end -end testing. Okay, so so this Playwright, you know, it's basically a tool that can allow us like after the web application is already said and done, right? So this is not unit tests. This is more like acceptance tests or end-to-end -end tests where you get to verify that your application is working end-to-end flawlessly is that what you're saying yes yeah okay show us how this thing works like let's let's say we're testing you know google.com right this is a finished web application or maybe microsoft.com right something that's already done and we want to test it end to end how do we go about doing something like that okay so let me share you my screen okay yeah, screen share is great and and I don't have an extra screen <laughs> right now. So uh, you're going to have to share and then minimize. Yes. <laughs> and then you just trust that I'm not making any funny faces while uh, you are. <laughs> I will. I'll trust. I, it's hard. So what? I'll see. You let me know. <laughs> All right. I can see your screen now. <laughs> OK. So OK. From scratch, from the top, how do we do it? So you're using. Visual Studio Code, right? Yes. Okay. So I am actually like I have already installed Playwright, but mm -hmm. do you wanna go uh, go and yeah, see let's the go, process? Lup yeah, Lupe, let's go from scratch. People don't know anything about this. I don't know anything about this. Teach me today. Okay. So thank you for yeah, also yeah. thank you for your patience because I know it's late. It's almost like ten PM or something. So you know, I know it's bedtime already, so, you know, I appreciate you. Go ahead. Okay, let's create a directory uh, that we can call it test with Hesan. Oh, okay. Um, and that's going to be, probably you have done a lot of tests, so that's okay. more meaningful to me than you. Um, I'll open that directory. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Nice. And that's going to be for now. It's just an empty directory. So a point here is that you don't need to even know the code base of the project that you want to make mm -hmm. tests on. Um, this is like from nothing. OK. Mm -hmm. Yes, like from nothing. And I, I think I opened it wrong. Yeah, you did. You did. A, yeah, there it is. It's showing, you know. Yeah. Do you see yeah. it? Test with Hassan. Do you see it? Is it? At the top. You know, when you click that search, um, Oh, yeah, new terminal. There it is. Yes, that's the one. But that doesn't open the solution, does it? Or or the folder, does it? It is, it is, it is not open. It just, I, I, now it is. Okay, yeah. now it is. Now we got it. Now, now we're, we're off to a great start. Let's go. Okay. So this is a right, empty, empty, empty directory that we have. Okay. And we can now, uh, start, uh, 
and, and uh, Node.js project. So mm -hmm. I will use this npm init uh, minus y to start mm -hmm. the, the first project. So we can use the, we can, it's going to create the package JSON. So if, yeah. if I list the files here, it's only this file now nice. being created. It's, and this file is like the, like it has to be in the root and it's the one that um, has a all, it's going to have a dependency list. Mm -hmm. And so far we don't have Playwright yet. Right. So to install Playwright, I need to go to the extensions nice. um, in Visual Studio Code. Mm -hmm. And this is not the only way, but this is the easiest. Let's just, you know, search, install. And it's, I already, I already, have, it too. I already yeah. have it. Okay, perfect. But Make it's, sure uh -huh. uh -huh. this is a Microsoft uh, verified. Yes. Because that's the only thing. Okay. okay well, once you have that, uh, you can uh, use the shortcuts control shift T and so recently you used this command uh -huh. <laughs> you can say install program or you, you can write it and it's going to appear there in software. Okay. Um, let's, let's, let's do only Chrome this time because the previous session it ha we had to wait to install it on yeah. multiple things. So you get, so in here, so okay, in here you get to choose which engines you want to uh, uh, run, and it even allows you to add a GitHub Actions workflow. I didn't know about that. So you can actually run it as a GitHub Action workflow to test your Intel. Oh, that's amazing. That's beautiful. All right, go ahead. What's going to happen now? <laughs> OK, so we're going to just uh, make a, make the installation of the browser that we're going to use. In this case, it's going to be Chromium. Mm -hmm. um, and it's downloading now. Happy and the first thing, yes, is going to give you like a welcome message that it's it's success check mark that it created the project here. Okay. Uh, we can run this command, mm -hmm. and it should uh, be our first test. Let's see what files have been created. So it was empty. We only had this file at the beginning. Yes. Yes. This file has been changed, and I got this new, a new thing. dependency, a dev dependency, right? Mm -hmm. Right. That is playwright yes. and another rest of files and not modules when yeah. you install modules and then these two folders one is called a test mm -hmm. the other is called a test examples mm -hmm. uh both files the both, in, both folders inside have files that end with a spec.ts mm -hmm. because they, these are tests written in typescript mm -hmm. if you open one you already have one test uh that is created or another uh -huh. um we can we can run one test um and if you actually see this it tells you how to run it okay. in the welcome message okay. so let's run the default test and if it passes we can now after that we will create a new one okay so i copy the command uh, this MPX playwright test. Nice. Uh, it says running one test and it passed. Right. We, if we wanna, we we could just follow what the terminal is saying to us, talking to yep. us. Like it says, now show the report. Yep. It's kind of walking you through each and every. But the report. Let's see the report after you do the the, the piece. The okay. Yeah. Okay. So what Hassan has seen and wants to sh share with all of you is this magic command that is- You guys, you guys are gonna love this. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it's called CodeGen. Okay. Um, what does CodeGen is open a browser, an instance of a Chromium browser in this case, uh -huh. that is in incognito mode, and it's a blank tab, yeah. a blank window. And in, the, in this inspector, we have, the test that is empty right. that is going to be created. Right. So tell me which site are we going to Yeah, let's go to Microsoft.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I go to Microsoft.com, it's okay. loading the page. Okay. And here. Oh, there it is. There it it's, is. It's already the first line of our test being created. So you're navigating, you're doing things on the page, and you don't have to go write the code for it. It's just writing the code for you as uh -huh. you are, because your behavior on the page is the Capture. test that you yes. oh, 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 oh. That's end-to-end uh, -end testing. Imagine that you have 
all the unit tests passing and your functions are working incorrectly, but your website's not usable. Like nobody yeah. can click anything. That's yeah. it. Like if you you have an application that does not have any like zero test, the first test to uh, start adding would be an end to end. Right. At least to make sure that you can interact with your application. Okay, let's do this. So let's click on this cart logo at the top. So that's okay. the next step. And then let's verify that the page has the word cart in it. Okay. So we click on that page. Yes. It says it locates yes. that icon. It clicks on it, expects that the URL change. change. Yeah. We can modify that. And then I can click on this one. Yes. And we have a selector. Oh my God, it's already doing it for you. It's already saying it must have cart in it. <laughs> but this is this, this is, is saying... this is this is not uh, this is yeah. uh, this is the selector. This is in, the difference is two steps. Um, yeah. First, we locate, locate and then uh, and then we expect uh, we re re review the page to hold. Mm -hmm. like we can add other expects, mm -hmm. but expect is the actually assertion that we yes. are like saying. Yes. This. So here, what happened? Is, we are locating an element, in this case, uh, H1, mm -hmm. which is a title that has a mm -hmm. text card, mm -hmm. but we haven't done any assertion yet. Right. Uh, because this is um, AI. Uh, now we can copy this test and we can modify that. Yeah, of course. Make that expect. Yes. Uh, imagine that, like, I don't know how to write TypeScript and yeah. I am, or I am more comfortable with using Python. Oh, it writes. The same code, it converts the code for you into any programming language. Can you drop, can you put that drop down again uh, just to take a look? Yes. Um, wow. So you have MS test, any unit, just a simple library, library async with Python, Java, Node.js, basically everything you need to kind of get up and running with Play. Uh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll keep in my case. I will keep just test runner, test runner with no right. yes. Uh, yeah. But yes, I think your favorite one. Is... Yep, that's that's it right there. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. This is amazing. You, you probably know better the end unit or library or their frameworks. Yep. That yep. I would I would copy that over to X unit, but C sharp is C sharp. Whether you're doing it in MS test, it's just the framework has a different language, but it's it's perfect. This is more than perfect lupe you have no idea how happy i am with this okay let's go back to your test runner how do we tell okay. it this page has the word cart in it like okay. as an assertion piece mm. so now let me just copy this test mm -hmm. uh first let's check if this test will run it's actually running yeah it's actually running so um if you just want to try your first test mm -hmm. to modify the default when you run the npx playwright test just takes this file, the, mm -hmm. the first file. We are not defining the folder. We're not defining which file. It will just test whatever is in this file. Yep. Uh, you can modify that command and test other folders, but this is the default behavior. So right. it remove all of that. Actually, mm -hmm. let me just remove all of that in the example that expect that TS that came with this with Playwright, and I pasted the mm -hmm. the code that we just made. Right. From the playwright inspector. Right. Um, from here, okay, I just replace that. Yeah. I will finish the code gen. You can see like all the the other um, windows are closed. And now yeah. let's test it. Let's make sure this pass. Uh, playwright test. So now you're running that test file. Yes. Nice. Actually, nice. it says one test passed. Nice. Yeah, so that's the one test because we said only one engine, right? So it's mm -hmm. only testing it on Chromium. Okay, now let's show your report. What's the report has for us? <laughs> okay, let's see this one. And it is saying that it's going to be opening here. Here we go. By the way, Lupe, what browser is this? This looks pretty cool. Is this a normal Chrome browser? No, this is Firefox. Um, okay. It opens the like Visual Studio Code is the one that is actually opening uh, your local host. Okay. Uh, and my BBS code is the one that is con like linked to open all, by default all the links in Firefox. Nice. So this is not Playwright. This is uh, my configuration. 
Yeah. Nice. If your default, default browser is Chrome, then that's going to be the one where it's been open. Nice. So nice. this is a test. This is the time it took. These are the, the steps that have been taken and like the total time for this uh, test to complete was about five seconds. Yes. And and what happens if you exp yeah browser context new page yes oh this is this is fantastic That's all the steps fantastic. that happen it um so and okay so you can see here it's using browser context mm -hmm. uh, which is not a browser mm -hmm. it's like uh, a headless headless browser in uh -huh. a yes uh -huh. and it's using a new page creating a new page and then close it at the end. So that's what is happening. Um, if we go to the to the docs, uh -huh. sorry, uh, right that app, uh -huh. um, you can go to the get started session uh -huh. and it's going to explain you like how to install it. Uh, this is a different way to install it to yep. uh, run and explore the, the the reports. That's what we have done so far. Mm -hmm. um, what I would say is now we want to modify our test. We have generated, like mm -hmm. we basically run into mm -hmm. other step. Mm -hmm. But if we want to actually like uh, make the test happen, mm -hmm. um, we need to add assertions. So that's what I was telling you at the beginning. Yeah, there it is. Expect page to have Title, title or URL or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. what do you, do you want it to expect? Let's do one expect that uh, the page will have the word cart in it. So page dot contains or something. Let's do it. OK, so, so it will be any weight mm -hmm. page dot uh, to have. So expect first, right? Expect page, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Expect page, and then that should have here. We have these options to have title. Oh, let me just check this one. Yeah. The library. Does it no. auto complete? Like if you say to have, does it show you the rest? Let me see. Yeah, let's just type in to have. To have there it is. To have property. Uh, to have yeah. property. Okay. Hmm. Does it have does it have like this locator looks for an attribute, right? Or yes. maybe so um, uh, does it have to have attribute in it? What I uh, let me just double check with this part. So when we have this thing mm -hmm. running a test, where is the mm -mm -mm. generate mm. price? Okay, this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Running no writing. Yes. So this one was the example test that we had. Yeah. So yes, this is what we need. Like we create a locator. So if oh. you see this is a page that locates or something, mm -hmm. that's the part that we have. But this is saving it in a, in ah, a, variable. In a variable, right? Uh -huh. Let's do it. Let's okay. do it. So let's do that. And just copy that. Um and I'll do this. Assign it to this guy. Yeah. And do you wanna do you wanna put it before the await? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Get a started page to allocate. And I won't click on this because we yeah, don't need to okay. click. Yeah. Right. This is and then we can do this. Expect to have the attribute and nice, nice. So let's do await variable name to have the attribute. And in this case should be mm. text, I would say text. Yeah. Or H1, or uh, yeah, text, okay. Because the other is uh, reference, href is like, yeah. yeah. Um, and we need cart. Cart, okay. let's see, let's run it. Shot in the dark, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Chromium, five seconds. Here we go. And it's actually that. Doing... Yeah, there it is. So so it's basically saying uh, received string nothing. Because maybe I'm assuming, you know, just an assumption 
that um let's see h1 to have attribute try to have value and see what happens okay if it has value in it yeah okay. i don't know, no, I don't but, know. but this is um let me like if i we can debug after like we can go step by step and we can actually use the playwright debugger yeah. so we can actually understand what is not sounds working good. yeah sounds good okay yeah let's do that and to debug we just do dash dash debug is that is that the right word in english mm -hmm. okay. what is that what what do you like, mean debug oh debug just debug yeah oh dash dash yes yes okay so this is the first step like going to the oh, you page. can go step by step too nice nice yes so it's loading and then the next step is uh, to have the url i'm going to check okay that's good then okay it's selecting the element we yes. have that and then probably this is the one that's going to fail yeah Let's see so how do we look Create. like uh, uh. okay so header class where is the word cart in there see it's in the body itself okay right? we can also do this um inspect because this is a, a web browser uh -huh. so we can check what kind of element is this one uh let's see this is h1 yeah see it's this in is the text body. this is the text content this is a, yeah is it in the body itself in the body yes no 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 not the body of the page like like in between these two tags what do you call this thing that's sitting in the middle between these two tags oh yeah uh is that text content or mm. um mm. let's try with text content let me let's, let's try with this one yeah we can also check. And we can look it up too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What if. Okay, let me try with text content. All right. Text, text content. content. Nice. And... Let's see. Sorry, I, oh, I, 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 yes, I have a debugger. No worries, let's do it. Here we go. Next content. Let me, let me just go, I mean, that, meanwhile, that's, that is running. Yeah. Um, mm, mm. Oops. Yeah. It is not getting it. Call. Yeah. Yes, and it's like claiming is that to have attribute, to have, what else can it have? Assertions. <laughs> so, so, so just a random thing. See, um, see it, it has to have text. Do you see it? To have, have text. text. Do you see it? Oh yeah. Okay. Should this be the one? That should be the one. Okay, okay so this see. you have text. And maybe and just the text. you don't need yeah, just the text. That's that's probably it. That's yes. it right there. We got it. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Thanks, Hassan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, this is fun. <laughs> see the most beautiful thing about these videos and demos is that they're just there you, you go. Right. You got it. Yay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so I have so many questions for you, but you know, I'll, I'll try to keep it really, really precise. You know, what do you do? Like if you're testing a web application that has a login screen, let me bring the focus back to you just because the questions are to you actually. So uh, if, if the screen has a login, right, do you have to, and there's like two factor authentication and all that, what do you do? What's the option then? Um, I am. Uh, let me stop sharing the screen. Okay. Yes. 
So if you have two-factor authentication, I would not recommend to like actually use Playwright for that because okay. you see that these CAPTCHA generators that mm -hmm. say prove you are human. Mm -hmm. That's the reason mm -hmm. they are there because they don't <laughs> want so many like automated uh, tools like Playwright or other web scrappers mm -hmm. that could ping the site so many times and do actions so many, so much faster that mm -hmm. they could actually that could be like a security attack mm -hmm. uh, like mm -hmm. and then the, the the application would not be available um, if it's used in the in so, the so, so, correct so. way. Right. So, so only that, for public sites, like something that doesn't require login and registration, maybe. You can do login. Um, if does if it does not happen to have like two factor two, two two factor, factor yeah. authentication, yeah. yes. Yeah. Like well, I would not imagine like when there is two factor authentication uh, that is connected to your phone. Mm -hmm. I don't see a way to to do that. But mm -hmm. in terms of cash cache or session storage yes you can do that uh with okay. right okay okay and you know the other thing is i'm assuming you can really embed that into your pipelines right so if you have a web application running you know i i would imagine there would be a way where you can kind of you know uh, override security for your development environment or do something about allowing direct access between playwright engine you know, or test test the framework and and the system that you're running. Uh, the other thing that I want to ask you, you know, uh, is Playwright something that I can like? It doesn't. It seems to be like technology agnostic. So the website could be built in JavaScript or Blazor or any other technology. It doesn't matter as long as you have a page and a bunch of buttons. You know, you can work through it and you can run it, right? Yes, that that's right. Um, it doesn't matter uh, if that. Page was built with the Blazor, C Sharp, uh, I don't know, matter. JavaScript, WebSimply, whatever you you think, Django. Mm -hmm. uh, you can still use Playwright in in the language that you want. It doesn't even have to be in the same language. It doesn't even be need to be in the same repository. Okay. It's, and actually, that about being in the same repository or not is a team decision. Um, yeah. It's. Yeah. it's it could be convenient, I guess, because yeah. you have their tests there. So yeah. until you start having like fifty thousand projects, and now it becomes a a mono repo. Mono repo becomes a problem. So here's one more for you. I want to be able to record the test, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what if I want to run the test, but also at the same time be able to record what's actually happening on my page on my screen? So engineers, when they come back and say, "Okay, this test is flaky. Why is it failing?" Whatever the case may be, you know, they can take a look at you know the exact scenario that mm -hmm. happened. You know, where you're clicking certain things, and basically that happens. What do you think about that? Is that possible with Playwright? Yes, that's possible. It can actually um, record and create a video. Um, it's part of like the test com test commands when you mm -hmm. run the test. Mm -hmm. You can you you can add that option. Awesome. Awesome. And then, you know, while I'm thinking about this, yeah, I can see it right here. You're you're absolutely right. I can see people kind of going out there and saying, you know, you can actually record. Uh, okay, so you're recording the steps, but then can you, okay, here's, here's a scenario with the sign in. Look at this, look at this. Mm -hmm. So this guy's trying to sign in. Okay, you're entering some information, launch. Okay, now the option of uh, record video, it looks I, it, I, it's, it must be there, right? Because it you're is. basically, yeah. So you're basically going and saying, okay, I want to be able to record a video and then I'll be able to kind of see with Playwright, you can record videos of your tests. Oh my God, Lupe, that's... If, if you go to the test options video, you can also enable them only for failed tests. So it doesn't take a lot of space. Nice, nice. So you don't really care because you don't want, okay, I see. Like you don't want a massive... Uh, storage kind of being eaten up because of the videos that you're recording of passing. This is amazing. This is more than amazing. I love this a lot. Um, and I'm assuming, again, like you said, you know, it's very friendly with .NET. So if we go into the .NET world, you know, for people, of course, like mass majority of the people that, you know, kind of follow me on, on, on some of the content that I create are very excited about .NET. So it looks like there's all these different uh, capabilities that you can get with your .NET application, so you can test through 
uh, this and you can record and you can do everything you want. I I love, love this capability. I can't wait to, to try it too. What else do you have? Go ahead. You want to say something? <laughs> yes. Um, it's, uh, for example, you are part of the TAT network. There is probably testing libraries and testing frameworks that are there. It doesn't mm. mean you have to choose only playwright. It can go hand in hand with the test that as you already saw, like with, with test frameworks that you already have. Um, in JavaScript, it goes like uh, together very well with Jest uh -huh. that is normally used for unit tests, but it does being like behind it, it can be used with that. Uh, so I don't know, in that net, probably you have some tricks that- Yep, yep, with that a lot framework. of tricks. Many, uh -huh. many tricks. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. With that framework, you, you probably like, it's not like totally new to you. It's like you already know things and That's you right. probably already know how to use Playwright. So. That's right. And I'm assuming also it's also good for um, Lupe, the the accessibility, accessibility test, you know, making sure, you know, that your page is accessible. You're actually baking into your system, you know, these uh, kind of different uh, specifications for a web page to be, you know, accessible. Uh, this is all this is all baked in. This is really, really, really awesome. So now let's wrap up with this. What advice do you have for people to learn playwright, you know, and kind of be, uh, kind of hold on to mastery in it, kind of, you know, be able to kind of, you know, own it and be able to use it systematically across their applications? What's your advice? Um, I think the first advice is go check the documentation because it's very well written. Mm -hmm. If you have questions, reach out to that team because it's a very small team and that's why they are very responsive. Player is very new, it has mm -hmm. get into this, it's their year. So that means that they are still listening to the people, they are getting feedback and they can implement and take the decisions faster because they are a small team. Mm -hmm. um, so it's open source, um, yeah. so you can go, if you don't find something, you can go to the repository in GitHub and make a pull request and they probably will look at, at, at that. Nice, nice. So star us on GitHub. It looks like it's, oh my Lord, it has 42,000. 40, I'm gonna give them a star because I like them. It's too bad they don't have sponsor because they literally are Microsoft. I didn't even know that Microsoft is actually the, uh, the kind of owner or sponsor of Playwright. I can't. Yeah. I can't sponsor my own company, but uh, the, <laughs> the core, the core team, uh, the core. That the good thing is that the core team is getting paid for doing open source, nice. um, and it's in Microsoft because yeah, the the core team works in Microsoft. This is beyond amazing. You know, when I look at issues like these, I see like adaptation. Hey, we need it to do this. We need it to do that. We need all these kind of capabilities. I love and look at all these open source, uh, open pull requests. You know, for uh, changing things, adding new features, you know, new capabilities. This is all goodness. This and is and all... also you can see like that, like how fast they close their issues because they are paying attention to the community. Yes, yes, 6,000 issues. Oh my God, that's that's a lot. Three days ago opened up, three days closed. You're, you're not kidding, you know, the community. And I'm assuming like also there is a lot of, uh, so you have 303 and used by 16,000 16,000, almost 300 people across. I love this. I love Playwright. Thank you so much for uh, introducing me to Playwright. You know, you are very kind and, and very patient and, and passionate, you know, about, you know, the topic. And I look forward to doing more Playwright things with you. You know, I'm going to try to kind of play around with it for a little bit. And then I might have a lot of questions for you. You're going to kind of help me out. You're going to be my Playwright guru. <laughs> what do you think about that? Um, thanks for all the invitation and all of the believing in me. I would not sell myself as an expert or as, as an expert. I'm not an expert. I'm just learning in public. Um, and I'm sharing my discoveries with you. And I'm just excited to learn along with you. If you have any other experiments, like you can call me and we can figure it out together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lupe, thank you so much for your time. And of course, you know, for the people watching us, you know, Lope, right there. Do I say Lupe? Is it Mardana? Am I saying it right? <laughs> Maidana. Is that right? <laughs> yes, it is right. My my Bolivian friend. My Bolivian <laughs> friend. Thank you so very much. And, of course, people watching, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, 
or compliments for Lupe here, please drop a comment in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this session. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in another video. Thank you, Lupe. Take care. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>